Hey, paper callers, let's talk about online advertising for paper call. Now, online advertising is absolutely massive. Global spending in 2018 was estimated to be at $628 billion. Now, there are two major, major players that dominate the global ad market, and that's Google with their Google Ads, formerly AdWords product in their content network, and Facebook. And so Google occupies 37.2% of the global advertising market, and Facebook is just under 20 with 19.6%. Now, that means there's tens and hundreds of billions of dollars of ad spend that's going on uh, through these platforms. And so there's essentially an unlimited amount of opportunity for people, regardless of what they're trying to advertise. Now, an interesting fact is that 69% of digital media time is spent on mobile. And that number is only rising. So the vast majority of people are spending most of their time on a mobile device whenever they're browsing the internet. Now, you guys probably realize this because when you're at home, you're watching TV or you're watching Netflix, you probably also have a phone in your hand. Now, some people will have their laptops out, but most people are just on a mobile device. Now, the cool thing about that is you can mostly speculate that someone on their mobile device is at home uh, or free at that time, and then somebody that's on a desktop computer is most likely at work or at home on a desktop computer, but that makes the desktop audience higher value. Now, both are relevant for pay per call, and we're gonna talk about how to, to leverage online advertising and pay per call uh, in this lesson. Now, just like anything, there are pros and cons of advertising online for pay per call, uh, and the most a uh, powerful thing about advertising online for paper call is it's the fastest way to get started. Now you can make millions of dollars advertising uh, in print or in out of home or on television or radio, but it's gonna take a lot more capital up front and it's gonna take you a lot more time to get started. So uh, by far, paper call is easiest to get started with through online advertising. Now the cool thing about online advertising regardless of whether it's pay per call or not, is that you can quickly test an infinite number of advertising combinations. That means different copy, different landing pages, uh, different targeting, in an endless array of combinations to try and figure out what's gonna be profitable for your campaigns. Now it's also pretty cheap and easy to get started uh, with online advertising. Whether you're gonna use social or search or whatever, you can start pretty cheaply, a few dollars, fifty dollars, hundred dollars, um, whatever it is, just about anybody can afford to test a little bit. Now, the cool thing about online advertising as well is that no one can really hide what they're doing. All the advertisements are available if you want to go look for them. So it's super easy to find examples of people that are winning. And when you find an example of someone who's winning, you can use the exact same type of funnel, similar ad copies, similar campaigns, and then compete with them or find your own angles to do the exact same thing. And so that's why I don't really buy it when people say that they can't make campaigns work because the answers are right there in front of you. You just have to go look, do your research, and do a bunch of testing. Also, with online, there's virtually unlimited amounts of inventory available. And what I mean by that is you will never be able to buy all of the available ad space on the internet. It's just not possible. The richest person in the world and most governments cannot afford to buy all advertising in inventory that's available online. And so it's a virtual, endless field of opportunity for you to run campaigns. And so the people who... Uh, fail at online marketing, they're just the ones that don't put enough work in to educate themselves and don't put enough work in to test their campaigns uh, and keep trying until they win. Uh, that's the only reason you will not succeed in digital marketing or as an affiliate is simply if you're not willing to put the time effort in to learn uh, and figure your campaigns out because there's unlimited opportunity and unlimited uh, number of campaigns you can try. It's like an endless amount of combinations and so if you dedicate yourself to it you can absolutely be successful and anyone that tells you otherwise is just full of shit uh, and probably makes a lot of excuses in their life 
Now there are some downsides to advertising on the internet, right? It's highly competitive. And the bigger your campaign is, the more likely that people will see it and then rip it off. And that's one of the downsides to advertising online. But the great part about pay per call is it's much harder to rip off of a campaign because humans are required to answer the phone. And so by creating really great, strong relationships with your buyers, you're gonna be able to build a moat around your business. And while it is still highly competitive, it's gonna be a lot harder for people to just go find a similar campaign and steal your advertising. And that's why I really like pay per call. It requires more work, but at the same time, it's got a lot more longevity built into it. Now, uh, people who lack creativity, cluster to the obvious traffic sources. And so that is of course a con. If you're doing search advertising and you have four keywords that you're trying to optimize like plumbers, right? There's gonna be a huge amount of competition there because those people who don't know how to be creative and find unique ways to advertise their business are just gonna cluster around what they think is the known easy way. And so that creates a lot of competition around the easy wins and you're not likely to find a lot of them. You're gonna be competing with a lot of people. It's gonna be really easy to find. Um, and so you have to get super creative. Uh, that's also a pro in my mind because if I'm able to be really creative and other people aren't, that gives me competitive advantage, but it requires a lot of work. So you gotta be willing to work. Now gaining competitive advantage on the internet can be complicated, especially if you're coming from uh, affiliate campaigns where people are just essentially looking around for traffic sources, stealing ads and running the same campaign. So you're competing with people that can just steal from you and you have no competitive advantage. So it's hard to build a campaign. Well, that is true in some areas of pay per call, but because of the way pay per call functions, you can create long-term competitive advantage that other people can't just walk in and take from you. And that's why I think this is a really exciting opportunity and why I think there's an endless amount of growth that can happen and, and why I also feel it's worth the investments because not everyone can take it away from you, okay? Uh, another con of online advertising is easy wins rarely last long because other people will see them and copy them. So they're hard to find and they don't last long. Um, and that's why I think pay per call is a better space than normal affiliate space because it requires a lot of work so less people are going to be willing to do it. And another con is the exact same thing we said was a pro but it's virtually unlimited inventory is available. That's also a problem. It's unlimited opportunity, but it also means that uh, you can just go in so many directions you may not be able to figure out how. And so that's why I teach in this course that you should pick a few different verticals and focus all your energy on it like a laser instead of like a light bulb so that you can find some wins and some spaces and then can eventually branch out. But having unlimited opportunity is also overwhelming for people and they don't exactly know where to start. And so I'm sure some of you are wondering that exact same thing, like where am I going to start? I can do so many different things. The key is one foot in front of the other, pick a vertical, focus on it until you can learn enough to win and then move on to some other verticals. If you can conquer one, you can conquer them all using that exact same process. So how exactly does online advertising for paper call work, okay? Well, the first thing we need to do is find a buyer or a campaign to run. So we can go to websites to find uh, paper call networks, uh, contact them, get your accounts. You can call call centers and see if they're buying. You can go to trade shows, meet buyers. Whatever you're gonna do, you need to find some type of campaign to run. Maybe you're a call center owner and you have your own campaign. It all applies exactly the same way. So once you have your campaign to run, you're gonna choose your traffic sources. And we're gonna talk about all the traffic sources in this lesson, but you need to choose one or two of those traffic sources and really focus your energy on figuring them out. Now, as one of the owners of the bigger platforms in the pay per call space, I have some transparency into working, uh, what's working, and I have a news flash for you guys. Everything is working. So everything I talk about inside this lesson, we have customers that are making millions of dollars on these traffic sources. So some people complain that they're not working, like, oh, Google isn't working anymore. 
give me a fucking break, okay? Every single traffic source works for almost every single type of campaign. It's all about how much effort you put into figuring out how to make it work, okay? So you're gonna choose your traffic sources. I highly recommend choosing one you've worked with before. If you've never worked with one before, I recommend you go to the biggest and the easiest, and that's gonna be Facebook and Google, okay? They're the easiest to work with. They have the best engines. You can start with small budgets. Um, they're not that complicated to wrap your head around. There's lots of other courses out there that will teach you how to use these platforms in detail. Um, and so they're realistically the best place to start if you don't know what you're doing. Now also, if you have a ton of experience working on those platforms, you should start there too. Um, but if you have experience doing other traffic types that we talk about in this lesson, you can obviously make that decision yourself. So once we have our traffic sources set up, we're gonna create our creative materials. Those are ads, landing pages, advertising copy, images and videos for advertisements, whatever you need to create to actually run your campaign. Then once we have all those materials in place, we're gonna set up our call tracking because if you're not using your own call tracking, you're gonna have a really hard time winning and you're gonna have a hard time making millions of dollars. I wanna reiterate that there is no one I know who is successful in pay per call that isn't using their own call tracking platform. Because if you can't load balance your calls across multiple buyers and do all your source attribution, you can't optimize either end of the funnel, okay? And I don't care if other classes or pay per call networks or whoever it is is telling you, oh, you can just use our phone numbers, you don't need your own call tracking. Well, anyone who tells you that, okay, is trying to box you in so that you don't have control over your campaigns. And then that means you can't leave them, all right? Watch my class about negotiation and then go set up your own call tracking, all right? You absolutely need it. Once you have your call tracking, create your advertising campaign, right? You're gonna set up your campaign in Google or Facebook or whatever it is. And then you're gonna create lots and lots and lots of tests, all right? And so I like to create at least 250 multivariate tests of just the ads to see what gets the highest click-through rate. And some people are saying, well, that takes a lot of work. Yeah, damn right it does. But when I win, I win big, okay? So the more you're willing to test and the more creatives you're willing to put together, the more likely you are to win, okay? And then once you've created a lot of tests, create even more tests. So once you understand what type of advertisement is working for you, you should create an additional 250, 500, or 1,000 advertising combinations to figure out what gets the highest click-through rate. Because it doesn't matter what platform you're using, whatever gets the highest click-through rate is what the platform is gonna optimize for. It makes Facebook the most money, it makes Google the, the most money, and it signals to them that users really want whatever you're selling, okay? So the only way to figure out what ads have the highest click-through rate is to test the living shit out of a large amount of combinations, all right? That's just grind, all right? And it's not glamorous, and a lot of affiliates don't talk about it because they don't do it. But realistically speaking, you need to absolutely do it. I still remember at the beginning of Facebook ads like 15 years ago, I'm in my parents' basement grinding thousands and thousands and thousands of ads and I made a ton of money. Because once you find what works, you can scale it. But the only way to figure that out is to test, 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 okay? It's about how much work you put in, all right? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to win at this. You just have to work your ass off, all right? Now, you're never gonna stop creating tests, ever. Once you find something that's profitable and wins, you're not done. Some people are done when they do that. They're like, oh, I got my campaign, it's running, I'm making money, awesome. Great, good for you, all right? Someone's gonna fucking take it away from you if you don't keep working, okay? So once you find a winning combination, you just got started. Now you need to test different angles, different landing pages, work on different buyers. You are never done testing. And that's rule number one of performance marketing is the testing never stops. You don't finish, you just constantly test throughout your entire career forever, all right? And then you're gonna monitor relentlessly. 
All right, you see people refreshing stats? Yeah, it gets addicting. You want to refresh your stats. You get to see the money coming in in real time. When you're making money, it's a lot of fun. Don't get caught up so much in the cool part about the making money. Get caught up in the details. What ads are working? How can you optimize them? What buyers are working? Listening to your phone calls, reviewing every detail about everything you possibly can until you know it intimately and then never stop that process. The more you pay attention to the details, the more you can raise your margins up. When your margins are higher, you can spend more money on advertising, which creates competitive advantage and you can own verticals, all right? And you're gonna always review your results. You're gonna review them daily, hourly, to the minute, right? If you're spending $25,000 a day on media, you got someone watching your campaigns all day because they can turn, they can change, there can be technical issues. You never know when a call center is gonna go down. They may not even tell you they've gone down because a lot of them are crappy. Or if you're going through brokers or networks, call center may tell them, may take them two hours to tell you, and you could be burning money. And so you need to be constantly monitoring and constantly reviewing, and that's why you need your own call tracking because if a network's buyer goes down and you can't reroute your calls because their phone number is on your ads, well, you're just plain fucked, okay? And so always pay attention all the time when your campaigns are running. So let's talk about how click to call works real quick. All right, this is a big thing for pay per call and um, it's for mobile, all right? So mobile users click or tap a click to call link and a dialogue pops up on their phone that allows them to call that vendor immediately. So if you look at the image on the right, you can see that I Google locksmith and I hit the call button and then bam, get a little dialogue. Now all I have to do is click cancel or call. If I click call, call is initiated. And so click to call is really that simple. It's really easy to set up. It works, uh, Google has call ads, Bing has call ads, Facebook has call ads, lots of people have call ads. Um, and you're, you're gonna need to know how to set up a click to call link, all right? And so these are real simple. Here's what a normal link looks like in HTML. You just set your href to the URL you want the user to go to. A click to call link is very similar, but instead of the href, we're gonna do tel colon, the area code uh, with the country code and the full phone number, all right? And so that's it. Then when the user taps it or clicks it, they get one of these dialogues and they can actually initiate a phone call on the spot. And this click to call link uh, is really what powers like 95% of the pay per call industry. It's a really powerful invention and it works on landing pages. Um, it works in email. It works just about everywhere on a mobile device and it's super, super powerful. So what types of advertising can you actually use for pay per call? Well, this list right here uh, we have clients using on a daily basis. Now, if you look at forums or some of our groups, you'll see people talk about these traffic sources and a lot of times they'll complain they're not working and they'll give up. And so, just like I said before, you have to test, test, test to more, keep testing, test forever, right? And so most people, they'll test one or two ads and when they don't work, they give up, all right? That doesn't mean that pay per call on these platforms doesn't work, it just means most people are shitty and lazy. All right, and so you're gonna have to test lots of combinations to make this work. Now, search, obviously you have Google AdWords. They have their own call only ad platform. Also ad extensions and site links where you can put phone numbers. And so search is a really powerful way to run calls because you can catch people right in the moment when they need something like towing or plumbing or an emergency happens or they're looking for something or whatever, right? And so it's very intent based. And so if you're gonna do search, it's very intent based. Now social, on the other hand, is not intent based. You're, you're essentially interrupting someone from what they're currently doing to get them to take another action. So you have to inspire them, you have to actually sell them on what your product is and why they need it. It's a different animal and a different approach. Native advertising is very similar to social 
And I would assert that if you can make your campaign work on social, you can make it work on native because it's also interruption-based marketing. You can target people by what they're interested in and you can tell them a story which makes them emotional and then gets them to buy your product. Now, some of the less popular areas I see people winning in pay per call and they're probably not too happy with me that I'm gonna talk about this is push notifications. You can actually send mobile push notifications to people with a click to call link in the push notification which is super, super powerful, all right? Then there's email. Email is amazing because it's the highest value of any type of user, but also if you use a click to call campaign in an email, guess what? You don't need a link. And if there's no link in your email, it's a lot easier to get it in someone's inbox, okay? And on iPhones, you can even put phone numbers in the subject line so that when someone opens the email, they can just click on the phone number right in the subject line automatically and initiate a phone call. So email is really cool for pay per call. Not a ton of people are doing it, but the ones that are are seeing huge CPMs compared to what they're normally used to on uh, you know any other type of advertisement with a, le a link in it. We'll jump in further on that. Also, you can make money on pay per call with contextual, which people are like, what? You can? Yeah, absolutely you can. You can do it on pop and domain redirect. It works in a whole bunch of different verticals and we'll talk more about that. Also, SEO. You can build all sorts of properties, drive traffic to those properties organically that have phone numbers on them, track where the traffic's coming from, optimize your sites, and sell off a lot of calls. Some of the most successful people I know in pay-per-call make a lot of money off SEO. So let's talk about page search advertising for pay-per-call, all right? And search is amazing. It's where most people start for pay-per-call. It's where some people in, live entirely. They only work in search. It may be the easiest way to get started, depending. And with Google's new call-only ads, it's a real powerful way um, to target just about any industry. So search is amazing because it's highly targeted you can actually target people based on what they're searching for, and so you can target them by intent, all right? And for a lot of pay-per-call campaigns, especially home service, people need something, and so intent-based marketing is a really easy way to get started. For instance, they may search, I need a plumber, or plumbers near me, all right? That is a really easy way to get started. Or, better yet, you get more creative, my kitchen is flooding. All right, and so with search, you're gonna have a bunch of keywords like plumbers near me that are really competitive, and then you're gonna have almost an endless list of keywords like my kitchen is flooding, where there's gonna be a lot less competition, and it's your job to root those out and find your best angles to work uh, with these campaigns. And so uh, mobile call-only advertisements are really the way to go with search. If you're gonna do search, Google is where I would start. I would start with mobile call only advertisements because it's only gonna target people on their mobile phone and you're only gonna be running ads that when clicked, initiate a phone call. They do not give the user the option to actually go to a landing page. They can only dial the phone. And that's a really great way to get started. Also, Google has excellent control over your budget, your CPA, and your hours of operation, which is super important for pay per call. And so I highly recommend that if you're gonna get started, you learn how to do Google's call only ads and you start with search traffic. Now, you're also gonna need a big list. The negative keywords will include some of those in the course. You should always ask your networks for lists of their negative keywords for every single campaign because sometimes it's more important to have a good negative keyword list than it is to find positive keywords because sometimes people are searching for videos and all sorts of things that don't apply to your campaign, and so you wanna block those things so that you only show your ads to people who are actually interested in what you're trying to sell at any given period of time. Now, with Google's new call-only advertising, I see a lot of people getting their accounts banned, and then I ask those people what the rules are and ask them to explain them to me, and nine times out of 10, they don't know what the rules are, so they get their account banned, all right? So Google's new call-only advertising requirements are pretty darn simple. You need a legal DBA. 
which means you're doing business as, and so you need an LLC or even just a DBA in the United States. You don't even need a company. You can just hit up your county, not your state, and file a DBA form. Most counties in the United States will let you file a DBA for $10, $25. It doesn't even matter. You just need one from wherever, okay? And most of the time, <coughs> excuse me, most of the time, Google's not even gonna ask you for a copy of that, but if you ever run into any issues, you wanna make sure you have it. Now, whatever you do for that legal DBA, it should be the domain name or the company that you're actually advertising as. So if you look at these examples on the uh, upper right here, you can see that you have ASI Heating and Air and Bill Howe Plumbing. All right, you wanna do your DBA, whatever you're gonna use your domain name as or whatever you're gonna call your company, so that under company name, you can put in the ad what your company name is, it matches your DBA, and if you ever run into an issue, you can send Google a copy of that paperwork by uh, contacting them. You simply just call them, you can email their support people. They're actually really helpful, um, and I don't think people realize that. All right, now if you're concerned about your information being public on the internet, and you don't have a company to shield your identity, choose a county, in the middle of nowhere, in any state, and file by mail. All you have to do is call that county in the middle of, I don't know, Oregon, uh, where there's like 2,000 people that live there, mail them a copy of the DBA form, they'll fax it to you, or maybe it's online. And most of these small counties do not have an online registry where you can search. And so you'll have your paperwork, but it will not be accessible to anybody but you. And then if Google asks for it, you can send it to them um, but other people aren't going to be able to find your information on the internet and use it to link your campaigns together uh, to try and, I don't know, do competitive analysis on what you're doing. Now, Google also requires that you disclose to the customer on the phone who you are. And so you can use an IVR inside a Ringba with text-to-speech or a recording that announces the, uh, the business name. Thank you for calling Bill Howe Plumbing. We'll connect you with an agent. Please hold. It will only be a moment or whatever you want to say, right? And then you've done your disclosure. That way, if Google calls the phone number, they're going to see that the business name in the ad matches the disclosure on the phone and that you're most likely following all the rules and then your account will not get banned. It's that easy, all right? Now, Let's say for a moment that you're going to start with Google Ads or Ad Center, all right? And so we know that this is entirely intent driven. What I'm going to recommend to you is that you use single keyword ad sets or a couple keywords, all right? And so what I mean by that is if you're going to do plumber, you're going to do plumber near me or you're going to do plumbers around me, okay? And then you're going to target the ad to the specific keyword or Las Vegas plumber or Los Angeles plumber. And then you're gonna actually put the keyword inside of the advertisement, okay? And so by putting the keyword that was searched inside of the advertisement, it makes it super relevant to the person that's searching. And then you can really optimize your advertisements by specific keywords, all right? What you can also do is generate a bunch of phone numbers with Ringba and use a different one for each ad set and then dynamically pass the phone number to your landing page for verification so that you can actually tell which ad sets are generating backend conversions inside of Ringba and you can understand how to better optimize your calls, all right? Now, inside of every single advertisement you're gonna do, you need to make sure that you have a CTA I understand that's super simple. I see a lot of ads that don't have it. You need to be saying call now, call for service now, call us now, whatever, but you need your CTA. It has to be there, all right? And now, once you've gotten your campaign moving, you gotta optimize for negative keywords. You gotta pay attention to what keywords are causing phone calls that are causing you problems. Now, the only way you're gonna learn that is by communicating with your network or your buyer or listening to your phone calls. So if you don't have third party tracking, you can't listen to the phone calls, you may burn your network relationship if you don't have negative keywords in place. If you send them 50 phone calls, a few convert and they're all trash, they may just ban you and say the quality's bad. 
And so you need to understand what's happening on your phone calls and what the actual intent of the caller is so that you can block all the keywords that are problematic for your campaign. And then you want to think about non-obvious search terms, okay? And so if it's a legal campaign, you don't necessarily only want to bid on the keywords that are obvious, like find a lawyer, all right? Those are going to be super expensive. What you need to do is think about keywords that other people aren't thinking about, like court in Poughkeepsie, right? Poughkeepsie court. Why would someone be searching for the Poughkeepsie court? Probably because they have a court date. What do they need? A lawyer, okay? And so you need to think about what people are searching for that also need what you're offering and there's gonna be almost no competition when you find those pockets of gold. I've made a lot of money on talking millions of dollars by using AdWords and thinking about what people were searching for that was entirely uh, seemingly unrelated from the main keywords and it almost has no competition and so it's just complete win at really low cost. The holy grail essentially. And so a great way to do that is to get a whiteboard and start writing down keywords and then thinking about where people are in life, what they're doing, when they need those products and services and then coming up with different angles that you can promote. Heading to court, need a lawyer? Call us now, we'll connect you with a lawyer, right? Okay, great. Heading to the Poughkeepsie Circuit Court, you need a lawyer, call us now. Like, it's amazing to me that I never see advertisements like this when I search for random stuff in Google because most marketers aren't creative enough to actually come up with these different angles and that's where you're gonna find uh, huge success. Now, up next is social. I think social advertising for pay per call is the largest untapped resource the industry hasn't exploited yet. And I, we have quite a few clients that are doing well on social platforms, all different types of social platforms. And the only difference between them and most players in pay per call is that these guys work their asses off, which means they're testing thousands of ads. Really, that's really the answer to how do you do it, all right? You, you understand that you're gonna lose some money and then you test, 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 test. Now, social advertising for pay-per-call requires more of a storytelling format, okay? So like a blog or a news type outlet, um, something like the example on the right. And the example on the right is uh, a fully customizable advertorial package that we released last year. You're welcome to download it. We, it has like 200 verticals in it and you can just like create your own advertorial that works on mobile and desktop uh, and run that on social. And so I have yet to see any social paper call that doesn't use an advertorial. So I highly recommend that you use an advertorial to do it. It works like any other uh, campaign. You create a really nice story, you put good imagery in there, testimonials, and then you have lots of calls to action, everything you need. Um, and so this is entirely customizable. It has forms on it too. Uh, take a look at the package. It's really nice. We put it together for you guys so that you don't have to do a ton of work getting this stuff set up. Now, um, social is probably going to require a long form sales copy, which means it takes longer to set up. You're gonna have to make sure that your ads communicate the same type of message that's communicated on your long form sales copy on your landing page. You're also gonna need to make sure that your landing page is optimized for mobile, all right? And so this is why a lot of people fail with social, uh, social paper call as well. They're not testing their landing pages on lots of different mobile devices to make sure they work. So what you need to do is go get a service or buy a bunch of different types of phones and then test the shit out of your landing page to make sure it works on every different type of device, okay? And so um, this is super important because if there's something off on a Samsung Galaxy phone or on an Android device or an iPhone device and you're targeting people with those devices, you're gonna have a real hard time getting conversions when your website's broken, all right? So you need to test it. So you also need to create a story that really resonates with the user. 
I don't necessarily think that a plumbing campaign is going to work that well on social. All right, the, the hook isn't there. And when people have a plumbing issue that they need to solve immediately, they're probably going to search on Google for it. You're not gonna catch them in that moment on Facebook. Just like if you need to run a towing campaign or you wanna run a towing campaign, social's probably not a good spot for that because people aren't sitting around searching Facebook for a tow truck driver when they're stuck on the side of the road. They're Googling what they need and then calling someone immediately. So you have to think about different types of campaigns that people need um, that they may not be addressing at any particular time uh, that they have to take care of though. And so I'm not gonna suggest anything specific, all right, but just think about what you see on Facebook um, and what types of campaigns work. It's an interruption-based campaign. It's not an intent-based campaign. Now, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that there's calls to action throughout the entire page. Just like you can see in our example, we got one in the upper right that pins and sticks with the user as they go down. Uh, you got one on the right rail. If you wanna do a really nice job, you can pin a uh, click to call button on the bottom of the device. So no matter where they scroll on the page, there's the call now button that's pinned to the bottom of the page. Um, and all of this takes a bunch of work, but you really have to optimize for the phone call not any other type of campaign. And that's another reason why people are failing. They're not spending a lot of time uh, optimizing their landing page to make sure that phone number is always in front of the user regardless of what they're reading. And so that's the most important thing I feel about optimizing your landing page for pay per call is making sure that no matter what that user's phone number, the phone number for the campaign is always visible or a click to call button, all right? And sometimes the user doesn't understand that it's gonna be a phone call, and that's why you need to like put an icon on your button just like that one on the banner in the lower right of the example that says call now. It's got a little phone there so the user knows that they're gonna be calling if they click that, all right? And so you have, to, you have to visually tell people a story about what's going on and then optimize for it. That's a little bit different of a skill set that most marketers haven't tackled because paper call is a different animal. All right, but if you spend a lot of time optimizing for the phone call button on mobile, you're gonna see much better conversion rates on your campaign. Now, I also have a lot of experience buying media, and I think that videos and testimonials always make a big difference on your advertorials. You should definitely put one there. If you don't have one, you can get them made on Fiverr, uh, you can host them on Vimeo or YouTube, you can find testimonials, ask your network for testimonials, Whatever you gotta do, you need to put some testimonials together and I really think that's gonna help you conquer uh, the social platforms, okay? Now, when it comes to Facebook, there's a really interesting feature that I don't think most people are taking advantage of in pay per call, and that's creating audiences, all right? And so what you do is you export all of your caller IDs from Ringba and you upload them to Facebook to create an audience. Now that means you can retarget everyone who's already called or you can create a lookalike audience based on all the caller IDs that have already called you. Now, if you wanna hit a higher match rate, you can also enrich this data by sending it over to the white pages, for instance, which will give you the name and the address and some more information that you can upload to Facebook to get uh, better match rates, okay? Now, I would also segment these audiences I was uploading to Facebook uh, by event, right? So people who converted, because I know they already converted, people who called but didn't convert, people who were on the phone for at least 30 minutes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm gonna break apart these exports into different files, upload them to Facebook, create lookalike audiences, and then test each one to figure out where the money's at. All right, and I would say that the vast majority of people in pay per call are not doing this one thing that I just described to you there. And if you use a nice advertorial and you take your data from Google or whatever call data you have, upload it to Facebook, create your audience, you're probably gonna do very, very well. Now, if you have a good relationship with your network, ask your network for a list of caller IDs converted to MD5 hashes and then you can't reverse engineer those phone numbers, but you can still upload them to Facebook and then use them to create audiences. 
I don't know if a network will do that for you, but I would definitely ask because I will do anything in my power to find better audiences so that I can target people. Now, I'm also going to directly retarget people. So I'm going to have a segment of people who've already called and I'm going to run similar campaigns to them. If, uh, if I know they're older, I'm going to run other campaigns to them directly that are in their interest group based on what type of campaign I was running so that I can easily, easily get these people to call back in again uh, at really low acquisition cost and hopefully achieve a really high margin, all right? Now, native advertising for pay per call is almost uncharted territory. I know a few people doing it, maybe 10 or 15 people, and they're doing well with it. But again, most people are stuck in the mindset of Google, and so they're not there yet. And so this is a really, really big opportunity. I know a bunch of call centers that are also using native to generate phone calls, um, and if the back-end call center is doing it, that means it's a huge opportunity for affiliates. Simple rule of thumb here, if it works on social, it will most likely work on native, because it's not an intent-based campaign. You just have to figure out what ad combinations get your clicks and then tweak and tune your landing page for native uh, to make it a little bit different or maybe not different at all. And so this is gonna be a multi-step optimization process for you, whereas like with Google, you're only optimizing for keywords and clicks and calls. You're not messing with a landing page for the most part. Um, with native, like social, you're gonna be doing your ads, your images, and your landing pages and optimizing what websites the ads get placed on. So it's gonna be a multi-step process, but there's a huge amount of traffic available that you can take advantage of. And you can see here the examples that I have, um, Nerd Wallet and Energy Sage. These are both campaigns that have paper call components in them. And you can absolutely find paper call campaigns that are just like these and then run them on native, okay? And so a great way to find campaigns for pay per call with native is just to look around on a bunch of sites and see what complementary companies are advertising non pay per call campaigns and then go find yourself a credit card and a solar pay per call campaign and you're good, right? And for native, it's gonna require long form sales copy that tells stories and elicits emotions you're probably going to need to use an advertorial, see our advertorial package, and that's what you want to do to win with native. And so this is going to be more of an emotion-driven marketing campaign. You're going to need to get people emotional to get them to buy. You're going to need to make them feel something. It is not intent, right? You're probably not going to find someone who needs their car towed on a native campaign at that very moment because the intent isn't there and it's a campaign that requires intent. So you need to think about what type of campaigns can be interruption versus intent um, and the interruption ones are gonna do much better on uh, native advertising, okay? You're gonna wanna capture the user's curiosity. You're gonna wanna scare them. You're gonna wanna make them feel something um, doesn't matter what emotion it is, it's just whatever applies to the campaign. See my lesson on generating emotions and writing sales copy, okay? Um, and you're gonna need that when you write your long form. I highly recommend that you use third-party trust, that's testimonials, that's uh, video testimonials, reviews, text and video if you can, and you're gonna wanna put tons of calls to action all over this thing, and again, optimize the shit out of it for mobile, because you're gonna wanna target mobile and desktop separately on native so that you can optimize your landing page for each type of user. Now, mobile push advertising for pay per call is something that's just starting to happen right now. I'm very excited about that. We're currently integrating our platform with a couple different push providers to provide you really detailed optimization, all right? Uh, but for the time being, if your provider cannot integrate with Ringba on a number pool basis, uh, it's going to work better for general campaigns because it's going to be a little bit harder for you to track. You're going to essentially have to use an ind uh, individual phone number uh, for each publisher so that you can see which is generating calls. 
Now, if you look over at the example on the right, you can see some push notifications. Essentially, what you're buying is one of these, and you can put a click to call link in it so when people tap it, it initiates a phone call right there. Now, these work really well for travel campaigns because people are always interested in travel or other general audience campaigns that apply to large groups of the population. This is probably not best for an intent-based campaign because you don't know the user's state of mind when they reach the push, uh, receive the push notification. You need to run a campaign that's an interruption-based campaign and get them to call, or you can drive them straight to a landing page, which then tells a story, and then that gets them to call. So there's two ways to approach the mobile push advertising. You can put a click to call link right in the notification, or you can use a normal link to drive a user to a landing page that's designed for pay per call. But either way, push notifications are pretty new to pay per call. I only know a few people doing this right now, but the ones that are are doing a ton of volume because there's an almost endless supply of push notifications. So if you can crack push notifications, you can do a serious large amount of volume, but there's gonna be a lot of panning for gold involved. If you can't afford to lose $500, I don't necessarily recommend that you start with push notifications because it's gonna take a lot of testing. Not a lot of people have figured out this game yet, so there's not a lot of information out there for you to read about it, which means that the information you're gonna get it comes from testing. Now, if I were doing paper call, I would be all over this because most people haven't cracked it yet. And once I figure it out, it's hard to find push notification examples on the internet. And so it's highly likely that no one's gonna be able to compete with me or take my campaign for a long period of time. And so this is an exciting opportunity for those of you that are interested in testing something that most people haven't touched yet. I uh, will pause it by the end of 2019. We'll see a huge amount of paper call coming from push notifications. Now, email advertising for paper call is something that I really love. And I know a bunch of emailers that are doing very, very well with this. And they're doing very well with it and being very quiet and coy about it because they make a lot of money off paper call for email. Okay, email has the highest conversion rate of any digital ad. It always has, and it looks like at this point in time, it's going to for a very long time, all right? It's the highest value user. You can get directly to the exact type of person you want, and you can segment those people really, really well. So if you have email lists and you know who they are, what their demographics are, you can custom tailor campaigns to the exact segmented user that you have on your list, and that can get you a really big ROI. There's no links inside emails, and so there's super high deliverability, right? If you're doing bulk email, you're gonna get a higher deliverability from it, which is something that bulk emails, emailers really look forward to. And also, you can use highbrow email delivery services like MailChimp, Aweber, Constant Contact, Active Campaign, ConvertKit, you name it, you can use it. Most of these companies do not allow affiliate marketing campaigns in their emails, and they only monitor that by the type of link that's in there. But they don't monitor for paper call campaigns because it's a phone number. It doesn't scare them at all because it does not affect deliverability, okay? And so you can build lists of people and email them using the basically guaranteed inbox delivery highbrow services, put phone numbers in those links, and you can smash paper call campaigns, okay? So if you have data, you can export your clickers, import it into Aweber or whatever, run paper call campaigns to it, and you're gonna see really high deliverability and really high ROI. Now, if you don't have email data, you can build your own list. You can build those lists off of Facebook lead ads. Those are really awesome. You can create your own one field campaigns. You can buy data. You can rent other people's lists. You can get emailers to drop your offers. Uh, you can find buyers. You can find uh, brokered offers. Whatever you want to put in the email, it doesn't matter because it's just a phone number. So it doesn't matter whether it's going through a network. doesn't matter whether it's going through a broker. doesn't matter if it's a direct buyer. You can run whatever you want the email campaign 
with the best email delivery services in the world, and most people are not aware of this. So another way you can do pay per call specifically is do your lead gen on Facebook using lead ads, email people pay per call offers, You'll probably see a return on investment from the get-go, and then you still own that user's information. You can re-upload those email addresses when they call back to Facebook and create more segments, look like audiences, and then perpetuate the cycle. Now, a couple things you should be aware of for email advertising for paper call is you need a controlled delivery, all right? If you're just smashing emails out and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna do 20,000 calls immediately, you're gonna overflow call centers and you're gonna have a lot of issues. That's why you're absolutely gonna need your own uh, call tracking platform so you can load balance all these calls between different buyers if you're doing email drops. And you need to make sure you get the hours of operation correct in line with when you're delivering the emails. Because if you send a bunch of email and the call center's not open, those calls are gonna drop. And so what you wanna do is you wanna send small, highly targeted, highly segmented email drops out until you understand the, the math, like how many emails you send versus how many phone calls come in. And then you wanna pace out your delivery throughout the day based on the capacity so that you can get as many of those phone calls as possible answered, all right? And so then you're also gonna to wanna to test lots of copy, lots of imagery, lots of subjects, Put phone numbers in the subjects, don't put phone numbers in the subjects, whatever, but test lots and lots and lots and lots of uh, op options and combinations so that you can figure out what generates the most phone calls, just like an advertising in an ad platform, all right? Once you have the winning combination and you know what works, that's when you wanna go find other mailers or mailing networks and you're essentially just gonna come to them and be like, hey, I got a DME offer, I got a social security offer, works well in these demographic groups, I give you the phone number, the creative, you mail it, here's your sub account, Ringba, track your revenue, you have your own offer now, right? So if you, if you can find a few offers at a few networks and create a routing plan that load balances, and then test email through lead generation, once you figure out what works, you can just take that to a bunch of mailers, you have your own offer, and then other people can use what you've, uh, what you've learned and do the work for you, okay? So email is awesome for pay-per-call. Now, contextual traffic for pay-per-call is a really interesting animal, and by contextual traffic, I essentially mean created inventory. So inventory that's generated through JavaScript injection, pop-ups, desktop software, applications, mobile apps, whatever. It's contextual because we know what the user is searching for or what website they're on at any given moment. We can target them by that information. So it's very similar to search, except in most cases you can target not only keyword, but domains, okay? So you wanna target intent, just like search, and Competitors, so if you're running a car insurance offer, you can actually target Allstate, Liberty Mutual, Geico, all the major brands, all the major blogs, thousands of uh, websites about car insurance and then pop up your advertisement on someone's computer right in front of them while they're actually interested in that product or service. Now a lot of people are gonna say, Adam, you're crazy. You're gonna do pop-ups for pay per call for auto insurance? Hell yeah, I'm gonna do it for every single vertical. It's super cheap to test. It's super targeted. I'm gonna do it by domain. I'm gonna do it by keyword. And then I'm gonna optimize the shit out of it by publisher, all right? And so if you want help with this and you, maybe you, you haven't worked with contextual traffic before, let your Ringba representative know and they'll introduce you to someone at these contextual networks who will actually help walk you through setting up your own campaign. Now, one of the interesting things about contextual traffic that's unlike any other type of traffic is the inventory is created. That means that your website is being loaded inside of a third party browser or being popped under or over or whatever, and it's going to have a specific browser type and aspect ratio. So what most people don't realize about contextual traffic and why they fail at it is they don't talk to their account managers and realize, oh, the pop-up's gonna be 720 by 640. And so when that pop happens, their page 
is for a much bigger screen and most of it's cut off, the user can't see it or whatever. And so you need to talk to your rep at the contextual network and understand what the size of the browser is so that you can customize your landing page to the actual viewing area of the advertisement that gets shown to the user, all right? And then you're gonna make specific landing pages for each provider based on that information they give you. It requires a little bit more work, but when you do it correctly, you can see a massive return on investment. Now, audio and video on your landing pages also works really well. Autoplay, obviously, because we're interrupting people from what they're doing. And so you can put audio in there, a beep, or a full infomercial. Uh, you can put a full video infomercial on there, whatever you want to do, but that audio uh, helps get people engaged on the spot about your product and service. So if they're on guyco.com and they get a pop under, they may not see it for 20 minutes. But if you have video or audio on there and it starts playing in the background and it's super customized, I mean, I like going all the way down to the domain level, I get my pop under in there and it's like, hey user, I see you're on guyco.com. We can beat their prices, blah, 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 right? And you're gonna have to make a bunch of recordings, but you can get really highly targeted and then you're gonna see your conversion rate go through the roof. You just put, click the call links on there or the phone number right on the landing page, they pick up and call and you can catch people right in the middle of filling out a lead or right in the middle of uh, their intent in their head and then you can use it to make some really cheap conversions for pay per call. Now this is gonna require a ton of optimization again, a ton of landing page tweaking, a ton of communication with your account manager and you're probably gonna lose some money doing it I wouldn't recommend doing this if you can't afford to lose 500 bucks, but if you can and you're willing to put the effort in, you can make a lot of money with contextual traffic on pay-per-call. Now, SEO for pay-per-call is SEO for any other type of online advertising, right? It's no different, except you're gonna make sure you have click-to-call links on there, all right? And so all the general rules of thumb for SEO apply. Content is king, right? You wanna use useful knowledge that drives people into a funnel. You do not want to use some bullshit outsourced $5 articles from another country, all right, that don't really tell anybody anything that you're trying to use to get traffic to your page. You're going to need to hire native speaking writers, and then you're going to need to hire people who can actually write useful content and explain things to people. You want to use super high value content so that users will engage with it, trust you, and then pick up the phone and call, okay? And so for SEO, you're gonna have an older demographic typically, all right? You're gonna need to detect if they're on an iPad. If they're on an iPad, it's like the holy grail user. It's like my mom, she's 66 years old or whatever. She's on her iPad at home surfing the internet because the screen's bigger, okay? Um, you're, gonna want, uh, you're gonna want to create long form content that Google will chew up, but also helps users actually learn and accomplish something. You need to convince them that you're an authority so they pick up the phone. Now, one of the things we've been using at Ringba to create a lot of content is doing videos such as this one, and then transcribing that video and then posting the transcripts. You know, we typically clean up the transcript so we fix any errors in it. Um, and then upload it, and that creates a huge amount of content. It is much easier for me to speak for an hour than it is to write the same amount of content for an hour, and then it's really high quality targeted content, and in our case, we're going after like pay per call, and so pay per call has been repeated God knows how many times in this recording, and so Google's gonna chew it up, people are gonna love the content, it's gonna get us really good rankings. So this is a super amazing trick. Um, it costs a decent amount of money to transcribe, your recordings, but it's cheaper than writing the articles, uh, and it's just a great way to do it. Now, once you have some content, if you have a bunch of different sites, you can just tell writers to rewrite your own articles from scratch, and then use it on multiple sites. Or, you can show writers articles on other people's sites that are really good, and tell them, I want this same article, entirely unique, most of the same content, sprinkle in some of your own unique stuff, and they're gonna be able to turn out that content much faster, and you should ask them for discounts because it's a rewrite as opposed to them researching all the content on their own. Now, 
if you're going to do SEO and you're going to invest in the content, you need to create a brand. All right. And so you want to focus on long tails and micro niches or something that doesn't have any competition in Google already. All right. And so if you can, you want exact match keywords, always get a .com. Don't fuck with me on this. .io is cool if you're in Silicon Valley, but no one trusts .io. It's dumb. Go get your .com. If you have to, buy it aftermarket on Sidu. Do whatever you have to do to get a good, memorable domain name. It's still possible to buy a great domain name for $9, guys. Ringba.com I bought for $9. It took me hours to find it, but it was totally worth it to take that time, and then I get a great brand name, all right? You also want to invest in solid design, logos, and page speed optimization, okay? And so you need a logo that looks great. You need a logo that is clean and professional. You need a website layout that's optimized, looks clean and professional. And then you need to optimize it for load time. So if you're going to use WordPress, don't cheap out and find the cheapest contractor you can on Upwork. Find an awesome contractor who can optimize for mobile and for load time so that Google likes your site and then will send it more traffic, okay? You need to test everything you're gonna do on all devices. Crossbrowsertesting.com is what we use at Ringba to test our stuff on like 55 different mobile devices. Use it, it's worth the 50 bucks a month so that you can make sure that all your pages work in all browsers on all devices, which means you'll get the maximum conversion rate. I would venture to guess that 90 plus percent of affiliates, yeah, that bad, 90 plus percent of affiliates are not using something like cross-browser testing to test their landing pages, and almost 100% of new ones aren't, and that's why most of them wash out. They probably got errors across all sorts of devices, and then people can't use the pages, and guess what? Then they don't call, they don't trust you, they don't click the links, they don't do anything. So first and foremost, you guys need to make sure your shit works, otherwise it's not gonna convert, okay? So that's like the bare minimum thing you need to do, and if you don't have 15 phones and computers to test it on, just spend the money to use a service like cross-browser testing, even if you cancel it after the first 30 days, okay? Now with SEO, you need to build links. Guys, be really careful with shady link building services, all right? They're shady for a reason. If they're promising the world to you, it's probably not gonna work. Buying some links is okay in some circumstances, but you wanna be careful, all right? Manual outreach is by far the most effective. It's also the most work. It's also the most long-term. It's also gonna deliver you the most results. And so you just need to decide what your goals are. SEO is always a long-term play. You're never gonna see zero to hero overnight. It can take months or years, okay, to win for SEO. That's why I think buying a great brand name, something of value, a domain that's been around for a long time is super important, or even acquiring some blogs that already exist on sites like Flippa, maybe you spend a couple thousand dollars, the sites have been around a few years, they're already indexed and already have some backlinks, it gives you a leg up and a head start. It all depends on how much money you have, what your background is, what your resources are, um, but you can find a ton of information about SEO on the internet, but I just want you to know that it absolutely works for pay per call and a lot of people do it. So here are some examples of some Google ads, all right? And we're only gonna cover Google advertisement examples in this course because I was actually only able to find examples of other, uh, other ad platforms that were Ringba customers. And we just don't do that to our customers, so I'm sorry guys. Um, you're gonna have to figure out those other ones on your own. But with Google, it's a real simple progression. Um, and so I searched plumber and I got some amazing intent keywords here which tell me exactly what I need to do to run my campaign. You don't even need a background in marketing to understand this. So I wanna search plumber. Plumber near me is the best recommendation. So that's an intent-based keyword. People searching that need a plumber, okay? Or just plumber, they need a plumber. Or plumber San Diego, right? Plumber near where you're at. Next below that, it says plumber salary. Well, if someone's searching a plumber salary, they don't need one, they may wanna become one. That 
is an example of a negative keyword. Salary, employment, job, right? Anything relating to a job, when you're looking for intent, you need to block. Below that, putty. Oh, people searching for things related to plumbing that are tools. We want to block that. So putty, tools, wrench, hammer, screwdriver, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you want to think about those type of keywords. And then you take plumber's putty or plumber's salary and you plug it into the Google keyword tool and it gives you a list of similar keywords and then you just block all of those in the negative keywords and you just get high intent calls. And so once I searched for plumber, I got two Google call ads, three actually, you can see the local ones up top and then a call only ad for Bill Howe below it. And then at the bottom of the page, I also have two more call only ads, all right? And then below that, I have more related searches. And so you can see local plumber near me, plumber near me, Yelp, 24 hour plumber. The 24 hour one has really high intent because that means it's like three in the morning and someone needs a plumber. Their toilets exploded or something. All right, plumbers near me now. Okay, that person's got a serious problem. Cheap plumber, Sam, San Diego. These are all intent based keywords, okay? And the ones that are looking for Yelp or reviews or cheap, theirs isn't super serious. Their comparison shopping, and so the intent's different versus plumbers near me now or 24 hours uh, plumbers. I'm gonna put uh, different keywords like that in different groups. So for instance, for 24 hour plumbers near me or plumber near me now uh, or plumber near me phone number, I'm gonna put that in an ad that's like, San Diego emergency plumbers, call now for immediate plumbing service, right? We're here, you got an emergency, we'll cover you, bam. They're gonna be like, oh, exactly what I need, click. And so Yelp reviews are cheap plumbers, I'm gonna put into another group that's like, discount San Diego plumbers. Find the best plumbers at the best prices by calling one of our experts now. Okay, I'm gonna address the intent of those specific callers in their own ad group so that I can get a higher click-through rate. And that's all you do. You literally just create groups of like keywords. I would probably create, you know, maybe five different angles for a geographic area, so like San Diego, and then I'm gonna replicate that into every major and minor city in the United States. I'm probably gonna have 10,000 ad groups by the time I'm done. Okay, but I can run a massive, highly targeted, highly profitable plumbing campaign by doing this. And so this is a breakdown of exactly how to do it. It's not rocket science. The answer is out there right in front of you. You just need to Google around, see how it works, and then create lists, plug it into the Google keyword tool, and it effectively gives you the answer to your problem. Then you test your campaign, load balance between multiple buyers on the back end, listen to all the calls, optimize, get direct buyers, scale your campaigns, and you're making money.